Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, it is April 24th, 2024. This is the NEFIO SIG2 meeting. Um, unfortunately, we don't seem to have a lot of people in today. Oh, we're trickling in. Uh, well, the hi, Bala. Good. Yeah. Uh, Bala, was there another meeting just before this? The Oran one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't know why it's not on my calendar. Is it, is it SIG1? Yes, it is SIG1, yeah. Huh. Oh, yes, I do see it. Okay, sorry. It's in my other calendar. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, maybe. I think I'm, yeah, I'm seeing some new meetings, yeah, et cetera. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Tell, can well, I request you to add one entry to the agenda since you're there? Sure. Uh, remember, we yesterday we discussed uh, about uh, the the platform, the thing for cluster uh, supporting uh, real Kubernetes clusters and uh, Argo CD, and we had the confusion in which teams wants to do it. So, can you please add that? Yeah. Agenda? yeah. Sure. Um... Does that make sense? Yeah, and also the uh, other GitOps tool stop. Yeah. And, and that, other. Yeah, the. Oh, uh, I mean, that's, yeah. Who will uh, do the support for the other GitOps platforms? Who will do the what? Sorry, for other GitOps. I think Sorry, what, Bala. Uh, what, what Bala is trying to say is that who will do, for example, Argo CD instead of uh, Config Sync? Correct, Bala. I think we just lost Bala. Ah, he's gone. Okay. My understanding is that what, what Bala is saying is which team I what I understood is uh, today we have config sync, so if you want to replace it with Argo C D or other oh. which team would uh, do that. That's how I understood it. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Is is that what you meant? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So I see, uh, I think Liam is already typing this in. So I, I see a lot of people are in, unable to edit directly. I'm not sure what happened suddenly. This didn't used to be the case. I, I think this happens because you're logged in with a user that did not, it's not the same user that you got permissions to the Google Drive. <laughs> so that's why it doesn't recognize you and shows you as anonymous. Um, so I don't know. You probably have different uh, Google users that you're using. Anyway, it's not such a big deal. We can approve it later, but it just makes your editing harder. Um, all right. So we're, we're doing these one-liner um, updates. We said we would try this. Uh, who, who else from Oran? Alexi said he couldn't make it. Vish, you're here. Do you have something to update? You just had... No, me and Alexi haven't had a chance to sync up after that last time, so okay. I don't have any updates. So, but I'll make make it a point to sync up with them in the future. Subash, are you here? No. Nope. Okay. Um, platform documentation. I mean, we'll just put this uh, all in for every meeting. Let's see if there's something to update. Is there? Yeah. yeah. Can you can you hear me, Tom? Just one minute. Yes. Okay. So. Um... Oh, your voice just disappeared again. Sorry, Bala. Something's wrong with your sound. Uh, You're not muted. Oh, now we can hear you, uh, Bala. You you came and went. Maybe it's just me, but uh, I didn't hear your last minute. My audio is coming and going. Yeah, your your audio has issues. Sorry, Bala. All right. Um, uh, Mickey, you added this NF onboarding item. Is this just a copy from last week, or? Uh... 
Mickey's not here. Okay. Uh, it looks to be a mistake from last week, maybe. Or maybe the question is, what's going on? <laughs> oh, the NF onboarding. Okay. Um, all right. We don't. I don't think we have all the people here to to do the updates. So maybe what I'll do is remove the things that we don't have an update for. Okay. You know what? I kind of expected. Oh, indicate indicate no update at all. Right. That's probably easier. But maybe we should. Uh... Try to indicate to all the people that they should join at least, right? Uh, at least someone should be there, right? Otherwise, uh... yeah. Well, you know, it could be uh, asynchronous too. They could update uh, if they're not sure. here on Slack or something. So I can, uh, I can send out after the meeting a, a quick question, but, or or reach out to the individuals. I, I just and have a feeling, is... you know. Yeah, I, I, my guess is people might be planning for. The conference and everything. I think on, after the conference, I, <laughs> this has been postponed so much. But I think it's just going to be after the conference that we're going to be able to start working properly. Uh, I expected this, right? So we're really starting to work at May, <laughs> and we were hoping to launch in June. So it's utterly insane. There, there's no way R three is going to happen as we planned it, or as we wanted it to happen. Uh, everybody just has to accept that reality. Um, at least we're well organized, right? Um, yeah. So, uh, so maybe you know what we do have uh, myself and uh, Liam here. So uh, we can update on the platform. And actually, I think I think these two questions too have to do with platform as well. So maybe we can dedicate today to just discussing all these, if that makes sense. And we can get to make these questions. By the way, Rahul has his hand raised. Uh, I, Rahul oh, is raised to... Yeah, go ahead. Hey, 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 yes, yes. I wanted to provide an update uh, and make Thank a few you. comments in the context. Uh, so, uh, you know, I wanted to, up, frankly speaking, update the statuses directly on the project, the issues that are created. Uh, having said that, I'm not, the two things, I'm not able to add in new issues or make changes uh, to the existing issues myself is there any way i can do it directly so that you know it, the 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 board reports uh, or board will show up the real status of the security so let me let me send in the uh, this you know uh, link of the board that i wanted to talk about so the other thing is i see that there are certain action items that were recently assigned uh, uh, number one, three, and six. If can, can you please open up that uh, link uh, at all? Um, yeah, let me share that. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if, if if you see the bunch of action items that that are that are present there, and I want to add a few other action items as part of this, uh, and make changes. Uh, uh, so so I see Rado has assigned uh, some of the action items to himself. Uh, which is which is great, uh, but I'm wondering if there is any action that has happened because I don't see any updates on the corresponding tickets or in the Slack or or, or in the uh, GitHub issue itself. Uh, so I'm wondering if there is any movement happening in there in, in any other um, uh, working group. So, I would assume no. <laughs> so so can I can you hear yes. me now? Yes, Balami. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll try to speak at least this time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rahul, to, to your first question, please, please feel free to add. And uh, if you look at any of these issues, if you look at the the project, the labels, etc., if you follow the similar thing, it will automatically show up in the board. Right. Uh, or, or if you create an issue, please ping me. I can I can do that as well. Uh, regarding uh, the things that Radar sent to himself, uh, uh, probably he, he mentioned something in the SIG release meeting that he is looking into these things on Monday. Okay. So I assume uh, he's looking into this. I'll, I'll ask him to update the tickets. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Super. 
uh yeah again uh, so basically the point is that i can just create a new issue uh, but i clearly can't uh, change the labels and things like that in the context of a new issue that is created right like so no no you uh, can so... if you don't have issues please let me know i think uh, if you look okay. at for example uh, hey hey tal can you click click on any of these issues please yeah open in the new tab yes yeah that's okay if you see here right if you see the on the right hand side there is a project yeah. there are labels you can assign the same labels and if you, if if you can assign the same project etc they will automatically show up in the board right okay uh, and i think you should be able to assign since you're not no 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 labels, no no i'm not allowed to assign a label myself is what i see uh, uh let, i i wonder if your permission the... issues let yes. let me add you to make sure that you're added to the team um okay let me do that quickly right now actually just to uh oh. we'll do it live because i feel in this team in this meeting actually we can bring up this board itself and say uh, what is the status on the currently in progress action items right like that would be the way to go for it isn't it like it, th th there already exists a board in the context of every team that is uh, listed out there in the document we just bring up this board and say let's talk about the in progress action items and, and let's uh, uh, you know, that would be one way to go about this uh, yeah um you know you you guys can see i'm i'm being transparent here so you can see how the admin side works yeah yeah um I, we, we've had a, a lot of different kind of uh ways to organize this in the past i try to clean it up a little bit um for example recently i changed uh after our last discussion i changed this used to be managers uh, sorry um not managers what was the word maintainers and i changed it to admins and gave so this is where we put the chairs and people who have admin access. We used to have maintainers, but you know we decided to upgrade, <laughs> right? But then we have per team, uh, you know, per SIG teams. And I wonder if we really need that that way because I kind of feel like people will have similar permissions. But you know what? Let's just keep this structure. So I'm going to create a new SIG security team, I guess. Um, Okay, I guess I'm in it. Uh, Rahul, what is your uh, get? Yeah, I, I put put it up in this chat. Oh, thank yeah. you. Let me see. There we go. Oh, give me just a second. Security, right? Right, Rahul? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There we go. Um, Makes life difficult, yeah. All right. One Thank pending you. member. Okay, so I will look and to give you permissions too for this team. But uh, is there anybody else I should add, Rahul, to uh, Six Security? You can think uh, yeah, Tom. Tom, uh, but I do, I'm not sure if I have his uh, GitHub ID. I, I, I'll ask him to. Okay, uh, well, to... we'll do that offline. Okay, I just wanted to give some uh, transparency to people so you can see how how it looks. Uh, we're, we don't keep secrets here, right? The only reason why uh, there are different levels of permission is not to lock people out. It's just to make sure that there aren't um, mistakes or anything, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so okay. Yeah, Rahul. All right. If at all you have an yeah. issue, the label or something, please ping me the ping, ping me the issue. Then I will uh, I will put the labels myself. Thank you. Appreciate. It. Thank you, Bala. Yeah, yeah but Bala has been kind of uh, the uh, self-appointed uh, and uh, volunteered uh, person managing the GitHub uh, issue kind of uh, front end. So, um, but Bala, don't, don't feel that it has to be on you. If if you know you yeah. feel like there's too much. Uh, relying on you, we can look at distributing that, right? It doesn't have to be just one person managing that, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, just a very, very quick one, Taz, before we move on. I, I think it's yeah. a little bit odd that the, the flow in GitHub is a bit, bit strange because all of the issues have to be created under the Nephew repo, right, first, and then tagged and with the, with the correct label and project. Is that correct? 
Yes, everything, uh, the, all the issues yeah. we are tracking under the nephew, uh, uh, because uh, it's kind of made 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 things easier for us to create the board yeah. stuff. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you create the issue in uh, under the nephew repo, and then yeah. target target la label this and and assign yes. it to a project. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um... Yeah, I also found it awkward, but I think that's just our system <laughs> that we found. Um, okay. Um, should we then delve into kind of more of the platform-related issues? Like, we can give our update. Um, we had our first meeting yesterday, right, Liam? Um, you probably yeah. saw yep. on Slack, everyone, that um, I we, we finally moved all the old... Uh, issues just to explain to people who aren't uh, don't know the whole history. So porch, the porch component uh, started off as a, a Google open source project, independent. Uh, it was related to kept the kept project, and then kept got accepted as a CNCF project, where which is where it lives now, and porch kind of tagged along with it. Uh, so. The repo was there, <laughs> but then the decision was that kept the CNCF kept group would not own Porch anymore, and uh, Porch's new home was us, the R Linux Foundation project here. Uh, the problem is that um, we didn't move the repository as is. Uh, we kind of uh, uh, John did quite a bit of work to do uh, a new commit, basically uh, move the code. There's a lot of stuff to clean up from the code, from the from the uh, kind of kept connection to remove dependencies on kept and um, also add our own Linux Foundation copyright because the copyright changed. And um, yeah, there was quite a lot of work to do that. But in that uh, work, what happened was that the GitHub issues disappeared, or rather they stayed at the old repository. And um, so <laughs> the work we did right now, uh, Liam found a way to export, uh, found a tool to export the, the issues from the old repo. And uh, then we were kind of manually adding them in an annoying way to the new repo. So that's what happened if, if people saw, like suddenly yesterday, 170 new issues were added. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was it. They also have a slightly different format because they've been exported and uploaded. So if you'll see some of the the way the comments work are a little bit different, um, but but it's all the information is all there. Um, so so that's what happened. I think that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> um, Liam, any, any more to say about that? Um, yeah, just thanks, Tal, for for for, for doing for doing. Um... For, for for doing that, yeah, you, you said as well we should export the 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 tools from Stu. I I can, I can do that. Um, I I think yeah, I should really do it soon, but I remember how to do it. So um, yeah, if, if uh, you're stuck, I can do it. Yeah, I, know, just, not... I just need to create that CSC and then uh, that that Go program I wrote should still work. It it should be it should forward enough. Uh, I I might do it in some some airports that we when I'm dying over there or something. <laughs> Um, the uh, yeah, but well, it's good now to have at least we have everything in the same place. Uh, that's the good thing. The not so good thing is the actual sheer volume of issues that we have. So, uh, I, 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 myself and Vikram went through them a little bit. Uh, this seems to be quite a few there that require attention. So, that's the next job for the platform team, I think. Yeah, so I think I think um, they've all been imported under Area Porch, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, Chuck. Um, okay, why why do I? I'm confused here. That this can't be all the issues. There were like 170. They may not be tagged for our tree, though. Oh, you're right. Uh, how do I remove? No, they are there. No, no, actually, they are. Uh, this is the project board, Tal. So oh, I, I have to create, create a new board, yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, okay. I, I mean, I mean, depending on how many issues we want, uh, prioritize those things, and then we can assign that to this board. 
Yeah, sorry, I'm struggling I'll, to I'll get. Actually, uh, yeah, I'll. Uh, yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So area oh, label. There we go. 141 open. That seems wrong too, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to give people an like a look at what it is. So um, some of it is very historical. There are issues there that were open even uh, before Porch was added to uh, to Nephew, right? So there, there's quite a bit of history there. Um, so bottom line, what, what we're going to have to do with these issues is triage them. Um, and there's that'll be a lot of work. So we'll be doing it in the platform meeting. And if anybody else would like to join and be part of just that, uh, you know, you're welcome to join our meetings and help us. I have a feeling that we're going to spend probably the next two meetings at least just going over these issues and trying to figure out if we should keep them and assigning a priority for them. Um, Specifically, we're looking for the highest priority issues that we would implement immediately for R3, right? Um, and that will probably be a very small set because <laughs> we don't have much time. But we need to pick pick and choose like what's absolutely critical and, uh, and work on that. And related to that, OK, I see no hands up. So related to that is these two. Uh, aspects that we've discussed before and to kind of find out, well, what's going to happen to them? How are we able to actually implement these and which team in SIG2 will be able to do this, right? So, um, Bala, maybe you want to present the issue here to everybody? Oh. So which, which one, sorry, Talk. Let, let, Let's start with these two and if you, if you want to present kind of what we need to decide here. And um, yeah, maybe elaborate more about what, what we mean by these. So I, I, I still see your uh, porch issues. Is that oh, right? sorry, I uh, multiple tabs. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that confusion. So yeah, I think uh, so. One of the in, in previous meetings, we kind of. We were discussing some of the high, at least the one that is one is a high priority item is to make sure that uh, the nephew runs on real clusters. Uh, right now, if you see all of our sandbox and all of our CI/CD testing is happens on a uh, kind clusters. So uh, between there was something that we did uh, with OpenShift internally, uh, along with the collaboration, uh, with uh, with. Uh, Tell us. So we found a few issues. Then uh, obviously, uh, what we then we decided is R three at this moment of time. It's time for Nephew to work on real clusters uh, rather than just a sandbox. So in my view, these are very high priority items because it's we are, like I said, it's almost two years in the running, and we need to we need to do, do this as highest priority items for R three. Uh, what that could mean is how how do we do networking, etc. Uh, Sagar is trying to do some POC in OA lab along with Alexi. Uh, mostly Sagar uh, configuring the switches and everything. This lab uh, he's trying to do with real radio and stuff. So basically, he's trying to create a real environment using uh, Nephew uh, and also the gaps. Uh, he's going to present some of those things in our one 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 summit, uh, uh, the nephew day during one summit. So we will we will we will have some pointers. We will have some uh, lessons learned and uh, the gaps analysis being uh, uh, done by that time. So for R three, I believe probably we need to make this a highest priority and uh, uh, make one of the teams. Uh, work on this and rather uh, let one of the teams work on this item. So it's also, it's not only just uh, me or others speaking. We have heard a lot of other people saying that too. How do we, how do we deploy Nephew and use Nephew on real Kubernetes clusters to deploy workloads? So that yeah. is there also. That is so, correct. 
Um, Wim? Yeah, no, oh, I, sorry. I think we... Yeah. Bala, did you have... Uh, were you not finished? No, no, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, sorry about that. I think last time when we discussed it, we said we need, because uh, it's good that Sagar does it, but it's a one-off thing, right? If we really want to support it, we probably need to have an environment somewhere on which we can test it. So has this been uh, looked at? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, to start with, I because... think, we, we, I think, uh, I think Tal is looking at something. I'll let Tal speak for him uh, on that. And so Sagar also said he's going to give us a provide, he's going to give us an environment as well. It's not only for himself, but for the Nafia community uh, with, a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a with a few servers, bare metals, etc. Uh, so I think there are two things. One is the environment thing, like you said, Bim. And the other thing is, you know, how what what gaps that we need to fill to make it work. So. Yeah, sure. But if you really want to, if you want to do it, you probably want to repeat it, right? So that's the challenge yes. always here, right? So the thing is that it's nice to do it once. The question is, how do you repeat it? Because at the end of the day, I mean, if we really want to do it, we probably need to have somewhere an environment where we can spin it up, right? Because the, the software is going to change all the time. Yes. You mean to say a part of the CICD system, right, Ben? Is that what you mean? I think so. I mean, if you want to do it well, right, you have yeah. to have, you basically have to, if you want to do it right, because otherwise it's a one-off thing. Yeah. I don't believe that it's good for humans to uh, to do it all right. the time. So I agree. I agree. If, if we don't organize ourselves, right, it's okay, it's nice to do it and then it's done and then it, you cannot repeat it, right? Yeah, I think uh, the, the way uh, Sagar told is probably he can provide a uh, some environments which we could we could use for CI/CD, uh, but again, uh, again the community has to be said. I think uh, if we don't get anything, we can use that. But I totally agree with you. We have to have a repeatable process. Uh, that means this whole environment needs to be part of the CI/CD environment. Yeah. Because were we not going to raise it at TSC? I don't know where I, I did. I was not able to to follow. Did did we do that? Uh, yes, TSC also. I think probably I can add add it to tomorrow's uh, TSC meeting as well. Yeah, I think we discussed because that. I think it's we, nice we to, to have to have Sagar provide an environment, but then okay, we cannot rely on Sagar uh, as a person to to. I mean, right. it's no, good actually, to to have it, right? But uh, yes, it's yes. it's not sustainable, it is, uh, it's right? It's OAI right? lab actually. When I say Sagar, it's not Sagar. It's, he's going to give us the OAI lab resources for this. So yeah, but but you're right, Vim. I think uh, I think uh, let's put the question. I have one question for TSC tomorrow on the dates. Probably we should also have this question about the resources. Uh, Sagar wants to jump in. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Sagar, I didn't see you. Were, you were part of the. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I mean, uh, sorry. So if there is a noise, let me know. You know, if I'm not able to hear me. So the thing is, I tomorrow in the TSC meeting, I'm gonna propose this that I am that I'm offering the lab. Like uh, right now, the right now what we gonna, what I gonna show in one comment is also for offering to the community. But since it's only for open shift, I gonna do something similar for vanilla Kubernetes because that what also matters to everyone, right? To have vanilla Kubernetes stuff and do something exactly similar. So, but the problem, the idea would be that we all discuss what are we looking for, you know? And if we need certain servers, we need certain hard, we need specific uh, switches. We will we'll think about it, you know, and then we'll figure it out and then we'll make a lab out of it. And, I, and as what Ben said, and I totally agree with that, then how to make it reproducible, you know, because if we run the CI again and again on the same thing, like redoing everything from scratch, might be, the CI run will be like two or three hours or even more, you know. So that is something we have to think through, that how to make it reproducible, because what I did is... I mean, how, what I did, the idea is also to make it make that reproducible, you know. But that's specific, like half of the things are specific for OpenShift, and then half of the things are specific, you know, for OAI. To make it generic for all the NFs is also, again, a big challenge, I would say. But we can start with something, you know, with, with which everybody agrees. That's, you know, that's the idea. And I think what you're doing is, is awesome, right? So don't get me wrong, but I think if we want to do it right, we have to get, uh, we have to make it repeatable. That's my, my just my point. But that doesn't mean that uh, the steps we are doing right now, uh, we can definitely, I mean, they are very great, right, to get there. Uh, 
but we have to make it sustainable, uh, I think, in my view, otherwise. Thanks. Vish, by the way, also has its hands raised. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is something that uh, I remember uh, myself, Rado, and uh, Victor last May had attempted to do something in this regard, but it was probably too mature. I mean, this is one of the PRs we actually, I'm pasting it here on chat, which I'm unable to. Oh. Okay. There it is, right? So we were actually toying with the idea of actually having real clusters, at least starting off with something related to at least, if not the entire end-to-end, -end, at least some components could be installed on like, you know, a regular cluster. Uh, we had this, but we didn't want to merge it back then. Uh, it was, you know, uh, no. saying that we anticipated some of these things, but I think the timing is correct right now to uh, bring some of this with some newer ideas. So yeah, go ahead, Victor. Um, Victor? No, sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, you had your hand up. Yeah. I was trying to mute myself. So, <laughs> so I remember like one of the limitations that we have, it, especially for real, um, using real production array environments, was the uh, interconnection of between the clusters. Um, so, so we any. Anything that we can do for at least um, satisfy that particular <laughs> interconnection? Because In now my view, I mean, you. We. I. I think to do this piece, we have everything. Because, see, I mean, we don't need to have a full blown fabric, right? So look at our environment that we have right now. We basically have one switch, right? And every cluster is connected to certain ports on that switch. If you take that that thing, we have everything uh, there to, to even configure it and stuff like that, uh, the switches as, as, as such as well. The intercluster was basically a means to get rid of a single machine, right? Mm -hmm. From a... I, so I have uh, I have that uh, available, by the way, so that uh, route. But what I wanted to do that in conjunction with the NF2 infra, because that means then the installation becomes way more simpler. So in other words, the, there is a few dependencies that you have to figure out. And if you do that in conjunction with NF2 infra, the, the thing is very seamless. But for me, the effort to do the hardware is not depending on that effort. So for for us uh, for this testing, like uh, testing in a little more distributed environment, like like having multiple clusters in different VMs, so we can achieve that with infrastructure. Like uh, I mean, you see, like see what we, what we do today, Victor is the following, right? Every server that we connect, we have a VLAN, right? So we provision the VLAN, right, and that's yeah. connected to a switch, right, and then we provision the switch. And then you have another cluster and you do the same, right? So that infrastructure is available. So okay. we can use that as is today. Perfect. Yeah. yeah I, I think I, to do the hardware, to do the hardware setup, I, in my view, if, depending on what type of environment, if you want to replicate the lab that we are building uh, using kind clusters, uh, we have all the components to make that work on, on real hardware, in my view. So, but you need to have the right infrastructure to do it. Right? I, I think the right idea. infrastructure is, is key. Um, I think, um, sorry, I, I made a comment here. We, this isn't an ad hoc thing, right? I'm kind of echoing what people said here. Um, as Wim said, it needs to be sustainable and repeatable. I would say that also means it needs to be specific, right? We are talking about very specific scenarios. So if Cigar built something, it comes with all these assumptions for infrastructure and platform, right? So it works on OpenShift with these switches and this configuration, <laughs> right? It could be somewhat flexible, but these scenarios are... Um, you know, they have to be very well documented. And um, so other people can repeat them. They'll have to build the same lab, <laughs> right? The same environment and uh, within the, you know, the envelope that we support, right? So that's why I mentioned here, I call it pseudo certifying. 
I don't necessarily mean we certify it, but we have a documented, you know, it's just like use cases, right? We say we support this use case. Well, we also support, say, this scenario. I'm just kind of brainstorming here. Maybe we can call it scenarios, right? A scenario being a combination of network functions, platform, and infrastructure uh, that we support. <laughs> By support, meaning that we've tested it and documented it, right? We're not giving any guarantees here. We don't have a certification program saying that this scenario is supported, but we, we maybe find a way to test it regularly in our labs, right? So we, we know that it can live forward and be sustainable and repeatable, right? As, as Wim pointed out, right, if we, if we make this work now <laughs> and we're all happy and say, okay, it works great in the lab, and then by R4, we've changed stuff and nothing works anymore, right? We, we need a way to kind of integrate that into our testing. It doesn't have to be all the time, but make sure that we test it occasionally to find out that the scenario is still working, right? Even though uh, we continue evolving nephew. Um, I see those as the requirements for, for doing this in any meaningful way. Uh, go ahead, Bala. Yeah, yeah, Dal, I agree to everything that you said. Uh, I think it needs to be part of the CICD pipeline. I think Sagar graciously agreed to do in the vanilla Kubernetes clusters as well. And obviously we're gonna get the lessons learned from him by the, for the one summit. Uh, and on your last item, uh, there is a epic I created. Uh, it's already created. A few stories are already there also. Uh, the issues are there. I, actually, right now, they show up. Maybe, I think, if I remember correctly, they may show up in the platform board. Uh, but we are going to create a few more issues based on Sagar's findings. Uh, the, based on the gap analysis, I think we may have to create a few more issues. I think uh, we will do that. Uh, but, but in general, uh, the crux of this thing is, uh, uh, Tal, what do you think? I mean, we created subteams, and subteams is responsible for certain things. Uh, yeah, this, I, I know. This becomes, a highest, this becomes a very high priority item for, for R3. Then uh, I think it's, I, it's good to have that uh, 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 assignment with one team. What do you think? I think we're, we're, we're in a big problem in the project and FEO generally right now. Everything has become high priority. Um, and, uh, you know, we've spent this cycle between the release of R2 and the release of R3. We did a lot of organization, right? That's great. But we did very little uh, actual work towards anything in R3. <laughs> we kind of know what we want R3 to be, but there's no time to work on it. Um, I think we need to decide what is high priority, really, <laughs> uh, together. Not, you know, if everything is high priority, nothing is, right, as the saying goes. Um, I don't know, Bala. I, I really don't know, especially because we, I feel like this needs to be defined more. You know, I think we need a program for this to say, okay, which scenarios are we going to support and how? Who's going to own them? How are we going to test them? I think, I think this needs more design work. Uh, saying right now that we have some issues and we can assign them to people and some team can own them, that's great, but I don't think we have a clear design for supporting real hardware. We, we can do these demos for sure, and they're important, but to make it a sustainable part of the project, I think we need to, we need to meet and talk about this and, and design, maybe, well, a suggestion could be that we can use the conference next week, maybe on, on a Friday, to create a session on that and brainstorm together how we turn this into an actual program. Uh, Fikra, go ahead. Just very quickly, I, th yeah, I think this, this should probably be a POC for R3, with, you know, with a small yeah, P, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and just go with that, you know. So I think obviously Sagar is, Sagar is taking the lead on it in some way. And I don't know if... Uh, Rado's not on the call, but Victor, did you? Uh, so there was some mention that there was there was a certain amount of Google Compute Engine there available to us to use in the existing Google projects. Maybe Tal, you can you could confirm or deny that as well. I, I don't know. Would would that be something to look at in terms of um, um, ha having a having a, a you know spinning up a couple of clusters there in in our Google. And yeah, that's, so that's, public, that's public cloud, right? So it's not, 
exactly, I think, what Bala intends, at least. Uh, okay. I mean, that, that's our only lab environment, but it's extremely limited, right? Um, Is it? Okay, I didn't, I'd rather mention that there was, yeah. there was un, not unlimited, but just want to jump a, in and mention that uh, uh, John Bellamareka, at that point of time, also had toyed with that idea. Uh, I think there was something about not having multis support, maybe. That, that was right, part of the reason. Right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So there, there is a, a multi-networking support, but it's not Multis. It's something uh, a little quirky and unique. Right, right. And, so, and I, I do project to mention that. Yeah, thanks, Fish. But on, on that on that point, in terms of multi-cluster, like, do, do can we not leverage some of the off-the-shelf offerings there in terms of meshes and and stuff like that? No, or does it have to be uh, quite specific? Uh, well, that that's exactly the decision we need. That's the kind yeah. of decision we want to make. If we want to make that one of our supported platforms, and I, again, I we can't give us that talk. We have to have a list of, you know, yeah. do we want to support that platform? I think probably not. That's not going to be a very useful platform for Telco. We need things that I think are more realistic. Um, so I, I know I'm on recording now and very careful about saying this, but I am working pretty hard to, to get us something uh, more sustainable substantial from google i can't make any promises at this point but i um because it's very expensive hardware <laughs> but i am uh trying to get this uh assigned to nephew so hopefully we'll have something uh real from google but i can't make any promises so well, I, i'm just being transparent and updating you guys on that effort but just so, so i'm clear and, and i'm not the, the, the service mesh not 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 fulfill part of that use case or something along those lines for multi-cluster communication? I mean, it can. For, I mean, not for the main uh, UPF and stuff like that, not for no. so that's the problem always, right? Okay, okay. Right, so, so it, it, for, it, for it, the, it, the service bus, yes, so if you look to the service-based architecture, yes, but not for the, like if you take UPF and as a man and stuff, I so that's a point but that, that, That's specific to the free 5 gc use case, right? That's specific to that those components, is it? Or is that the... That's specific to telco workloads, right? So yeah, okay, uh, to, to, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah, Thanks for the challenge. You, I mean, and I, I Fiacra, don't get me wrong. You can make it work on it, but then you are trying. I, so my view on that is that you are trying to mimic something that is not real. Yeah. 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 We we, then, we have a challenge yeah. here. It's not just a real hardware, but we also re need real network functions, right? Um, yeah. The the problem is our scenarios are just not realistic quite yet, right? So. But just just for me, like it's are, are fine using just regular TCP IP, but real network functions probably uh, need something more substantial. For example, they won't work on a service mesh, right? Yeah. Um, no, just in terms of, you know, so in terms, just for just for user friendliness, like, if, you know, if, if we had one platform or one uh, 3PP that we could do, instead of having to use CNI and Multus and other bits and pieces, you know, maybe bits, bits, you know, plumbing to, to make it work, if it was kind of a, but no, if if it if it's needed, then it's needed. Then you know, but that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fiat, the challenge is to mimic the actual deployment. So yeah, the one thing I think I think I like the idea of Fiatra, like you mentioned about POC. Probably I don't know whether Sagar. Uh, I think it looks like Sagar left the call. He had to leave early, I think. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I think turning this into a POC is also a great idea. The stories and epics are there. Probably will create a few more issues, and then probably create a POC. Uh, for this, for the R3 time frame, and then at least showcase that as a part of R3. I think that's a good incremental step. Yeah, I so I I have an idea, Bala. Let's let's turn this into a use case, you know, a Sig One style use case. Okay. So okay. we can actually have a design document for this. Understand why we are doing this, right? You know, because we're going to have a very limited number of scenarios that we support, and we're going to have to work quite hard to build them and make them repeatable and maintainable by the community, right? Because every scenario we add, right, say OAI on OpenShift in Sagar's lab, <laughs> okay, and we define that scenario pretty well, we need to continue testing it and make sure that it's truly supported by us, right? That, that has that value. Right, we're not certifying, we're not that kind of project, but we need to at least say that this is passing tests. Um, now, 
we need to, it's it's a big effort and we need to understand you know what is why are we doing that what is the value and you know i i think we all have some ideas of why we want to do that right because it shows the world at large that nephew is actually can work in a production environment yes although i would say still this is still a lab this is not production right the, the big missing link here that i keep mentioning is scale right we can make everything work for one lab site but have we tested this for 100,000 uh, sites which is what nephew is trying to aim at no right so um th there are limits to what we're actually proving here but um yeah, there are Maybe it's an, this is an important incremental step, right? Today, yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with you on the scale side. I think that's a, that's another thing that we need to tackle. But if you remember, that's why I, when Kandan suggested scalability as a theme for this release, I actually pushed back. <laughs> we are not there at. Yeah, we I remember need, that. Yeah. yeah, I we need yeah. to get the fundamentals uh, correct a little bit more, and then probably think about. I think I think yes. Uh, I, just to clarify, the the, the uh, me and Sagar discussed. Uh, this is obviously the the work that we started, which is an open shift. But this particular thing, we uh, Sagar will set up actual cluster using a vanilla Kubernetes, not an open shift. Just just to just for the clarity, I just wanted to add that. So since this since this does not have an open shift specific flavor to it, so. This will be done on a okay. many like Kubernetes clusters. So I think turning this into a doc design document and then a PUC for the R3 time frame and then doing a demo on that, that would be a great milestone. I agree with your suggestion, talk. Probably let's take, let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me let me record it here. Um, so we'll see who will follow through with that. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I wanted to add, um, yeah, sorry. I, there was something else I wanted to say. Uh, oh, uh, just a quick note <laughs> on something you mentioned, Ba, um, you know, regarding scalability coming later, Maybe we'll work on that later, but I'm extremely concerned that uh, architectural decisions we make now will affect scalability later. So just like security is not something that you, uh, you know, oh, you finish everything and now you make it secure. You know, I'm sure Rahul will uh, argue that that's the wrong way to think, right? You need to think about these issues from the very start. And um, we need to think about these issues, right? We. We haven't really, we, we talk about them, but I think we need to start at least testing our scalability options to have some data so we know where we are. Uh, there's a bottom line that we have no idea. I can tell you that has anybody tested Nephio for 10 sites, 100 sites, 1,000 sites, <laughs> right? Nobody has really done that, I think, maybe 10. And I can tell you that when I tested things with just 10 sites, you know, because I'm trying orders of magnitude, everything failed, like uh, considerable errors and timeouts with, with porch. So it could be very simple things, but, you know, we, we haven't gotten to a point where um, we have any idea how much we can scale, right? We're, t we're, still, we're still talking about a handful of workload sites. <laughs> so that's yeah, just where we are. And that do not on real clusters. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm saying um, yeah. I, I'm 100% I'm agreeing with you. I'm just saying, and we, we need to do two things in order to mature Nephew. One of them is absolutely move to lab environments that simulate real production sites, but also to tackle the, the scale issue because that's our promise, right? That's what Nephew is supposed to promise from the very beginning. Um, we're doing all of this for telco scale. Right. That that is. <laughs> Otherwise, if if all we can do is a simple lab, then the, this is far too complex for for that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, Bish. Go, please, please join. Add your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I was going to say what. Uh, okay, you also agreed with Bala, right? Because when I'm looking at this, basically, porch is the component I'm thinking where it needs to be scalable. Is what I feel. 
one of the pieces, maybe not everything, right? I mean, uh, I look at, we are using Git today, right? But we need to be able to use uh, actual GitHub and see how it works, you know? And see how many GitHub uh, sites we are able to go off and push those, uh, push the specialization of those, uh, no KPD files, not KPD anymore, but yeah, those files. So have we thought about, at least in the context of Porch, what needs to be tested, focusing only on Porch? Well, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know if any telco will be using GitLab, even private repositories for their production. They'll probably, sorry, yeah, GitHub, probably they'll need to host their own environment. So it might be something like a self-hosted GitLab, right? Mm -hmm. Git probably isn't enough. Oh, yeah. There might be some other solutions for hosting Git, but yeah, again, think about that, that a telco would need if they're very serious about GitOps, we're talking about hosting a Git repository per site. Has somebody self-hosted hundreds of thousands of Git repositories? Right, right. GitOps, in my opinion, works really great when you have a limited number of sites, right? Which is what a lot of enterprise environments are about. But GitOps for telco, you know, in a very highly distributed edge environment, I, I have many concerns about that. <laughs> Right, so uh, yeah, I, I think people have thought about it, but I don't know if we've discussed this together as a community, what that would actually look like, a production environment using Nephew with yeah. a million repositories, right? And some <laughs> of the, and to you and Bala's point, some of those guys will not even be looking at it until they actually have this working on a real cluster. <laughs> and then they will start asking these questions. Yeah. 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 I think we need to do both. Yeah, go ahead, Wim. Yeah, I don't think we need a million repositories necessarily. What I can say is we have done uh, uh, recently a bit of performance testing on Git as a backend for a version control system. It scales very well, by the way, very well. Like scaling and what, and what do you mean? I'm talking a few hundred millions objects. Oh, yeah, 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 per repository. Right, so, so there's another way that we can have a single repository for oh, many different I, 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 But Yeah, so, so in other words, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that Git as a backend scales well. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it well. contains, there's a single repository for the entire Linux kernel, right? It's even yeah. faster than a regular database uh, system, so. So, so again, yeah, scalability and... and in what way? Yeah, yeah, a single repository. Get no, no, is extremely no, 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 I'm not even talking single repository, multiple, but I'm not saying that you, hey, our view is that, hey, our, our results show that the amount of repositories doesn't matter. Okay, well, we're not going to handle that now. Yeah, Git is amazing. I, I love Git. The question is, will Git do what Nephew what we're trying to do here for uh, for telcos, right? And 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 that needs to be tested, right? Because it's not just we're not using Git as a, right. We're using Git in a very specific way, right? Porch is using Git in a specific way, and then Config Sync is using Git as, in a very specific way. And um, we're we're trying to design a very large scale network. So uh, these well, are open what, I, what I'm trying to say, uh, Tal, is to use Git in that way is. Uh, is good. It's okay, is what I'm trying to say. That's our assessment. So hopefully, I think we'll have use cases for scalability. And then let me start looking at those use cases. Uh, when we start discussing them, so maybe some of those issues that we didn't think through might uh, arise, is what I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that how Port uses it right now. I'm saying Git as a backend. Uh, mm. to yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it probably is. I, again, you're even, saying that. We don't. We won't need a Git repo per site. See, it's a choice we have. I think that that doesn't really matter, right? I would not do it personally, but it doesn't affect scale. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it's my point is that it needs to be hosted. Different. We were talking specifically the, about Vish was raising the issue of Gitty, right? That's what I'm talking about. So, oh, so yeah. And, and I'm not. I'm not saying. Uh, I'm not. Saying that Git, we didn't use Git, we used a Git backend, right? Uh, hosted privately, uh, that is set up properly to be able to support it, right? So, so in other words, it just has to do with how you support the Git uh, environment. 
That's yeah, really anyway, topic. yeah, um, that's, it's a very big topic. So um, just to follow through, so, so Bawa, do you, who's going to own this to try to kind of move this forward? We have uh, some summary here. Maybe we can bring it in, up in the TSC meeting and see, you know, should this be a SIG one thing to actually design it or? Um, Not in the TSC meeting, probably next week. So let's, let's discuss this in, when we meet next week. Okay. Well, we captured the conversation here. We definitely need to follow up on this. Let's not let it die here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 discuss next week. Uh, one of those days, uh, between Monday to Thursday. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Next week is going to be crazy. Yeah. I okay, think everybody. So, so this just and a... probably, I'm I'm hoping uh, just like the way we did, we can turn it into a POC and a Sig one item, like you said, and we can figure out who wants to do it. Yeah. All right, everybody. Just a reminder that uh, next week there'll probably be n none of the standing nephew meetings because we'll we'll be at the conference. Uh, some of us, not all of us. So uh, no meetings next week. We should probably update the calendar too, just to make sure that people don't come. I'll yeah. try to do that. All right. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank um, you. I'll bye see bye. some of you in person next week. Cheers. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank right. you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.